You ever find yourself bored online and reading things when, boom, something hits you like a ton of bricks? Suddenly, epiphany. I had that today when reading about Star Wars, George Lucas, and J.J. Abrams. See, apparently, George Lucas, you know, that guy, the one who created success, was talking to J.J. Abrams. You know that guy, too. The guy who emulates success because he can't found it on his own. Yeah, they were having a discussion. They were talking about Star Wars and how things should go from the prequels on. Well, when they were discussing these things, they came to things like continuity, things like midichlorians. They talked about the backdrop of ideas and where George Lucas wanted to go. And you know what J.J. Abrams said about that? Not interested. Not interested. Needs more lens flare. Hey there. So today I want to return to that wonderful world of train wrecks. And there's no train wreck quite like that one that occurs in a galaxy far, far away. That's right. Star Wars. Disney Star Wars, to be more concise. You know that thing everybody was excited about at first versus now with the rise of Skywalker? Yeah, that thing. So imagine finding finding out that it could have been something different, that it should have been something different, that those blueprints that we heard of, they weren't only dismissed by Disney, but when you had J.J. Abrams sitting around, he said, nah, I'm good with that. I don't need that stuff in my movies. Now, before we get into the article that pretty much showcases all of this, if you like this kind of content, make sure you're subbed to the channel. Enjoy these videos. We'll pass them along to others. Make sure you wrap them up in a nice bow and share them as Christmas presents because sharing is indeed caring. If you want to go further, you want to help the channel out in different ways, well, we have a join button finally. Oh my gosh, can you believe that? Two tiers to it. Check that out. If you want to check out other links, they're there, including our comic book, Case of the Littlest Umbrella. That thing closes down in November, so check that out too. And thank you, no matter what you do. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate you. So when talking about this article, it's coming out of Cinema Blend, a place that I'd never heard about before. And I want to go through this article with you just to really give you a feel for it. Yes, Star Wars George Lucas talked to J.J. Abrams about midichlorians. Hmm, wow. So we had discussions about continuity. Hmm, interesting. Interesting indeed. So the Star Wars franchise has been entertaining moviegoers for decades. George Lucas created colorful galaxies of characters and changed the world of cinema with his original movies. Lucas expanded the franchise with the prequel trilogy, although some of his narrative choices for those movies haven't aged well. One of those included the concept of midichlorians, which gives a scientific explanation explanation for the Force. Now, midichlorians were introduced in The Phantom Menace, which is one of the least popular installments in the beloved franchise. They were microscopic life forms that lived within the blood of all life forms. The Force flows through said midichlorians, and measuring them could give an indication for Force sensitivity. The Jedi Council measured them in Anakin Skywalker, revealing that he had more than even Master Yoda. J.J. Abrams spoke with George Lucas ahead of Force Awakens, and it turns out that Lucas brought up the uh, controversial midichlorians in their conversation. Quote, he had a lot of things to say about the nature of the Force, the themes that he was dealing with when he was writing the movies. Yes, there were some conversations about midichlorians. He loves his midichlorians, but it was a very helpful thing. Sitting with him is a treat just to hear him talk because it's Effing George Lucas talking about Star Wars. I always feel it's a gift to hear him talk about that stuff because the effect that he had on me at 10 years old is utterly profound. Now, I always love how every one of these folks starts out like this. I mean, when I think back to D&D &D and I think back to what they had planned before it was canceled, they said the same things. The impact that George Lucas had on us and Star Wars had on us, it was utterly profound. In fact, when I think back to being a kid, and it's the same thing that we're hearing here. This is always used as a principle to say that, hey, this stuff, it worked as a foundation, but I'm no longer working on the foundation. I'm building upper floors. Now, what's crazy about that is the foundation works. I mean, really, when you go back to those guiding principles, they worked. Whether or not you agree with some of it, whether or not you want to utilize it, you can't just ignore it either because 
those guiding principles, they were established within your movies, not your extended universe, but your movies itself. But still, doesn't matter. We'll just go out and, well, let's see the rest of this. So Lucas gonna Lucas, they say, which is a cringy, cringy thing to put in there. Oh, it makes my skin crawl. The iconic filmmaker is known for his vision, and the years and selling of Lucasfilm hasn't changed that. But while George Lucas isn't uh, involved in the current trilogy, he still made his intentions known to J.J. Abrams, midichlorians and all. Again, you have all of this set down with somebody. You have the creator of something that worked on an epic scale, trying to share their love, trying to share their knowledge, and again, trying to share success that you might be able to emulate. Not go in and gloss up, which is the thing that a J.J. Abrams does and the thing that a Disney does, but actually go out and again, find something that connects and that resonates and maybe, just maybe, pull everybody in as an audience. Continuing, J.J. Abrams' comment to Total Films will no doubt trigger Star Wars fans who are still sore about the prequels. George Lucas' second set of films left something to be desired and have been the butt of countless jokes throughout the years. The Phantom Menace, in particular, seems to be the most controversial installment from George Lucas. Huh. So they were the butt of a joke. Actually, if you think about the butt of jokes these days, you have entire networks built on talking about the joke that the current installment is. Yes, the earlier prequels, they are by no stretch of the imagination fun to watch in those early segments. You may be able to age into them somewhat. For myself, I hate watching that first one, but when I'm watching that versus a remake with more lens flare, hmm, I'll probably still go with the pod racing. Continuing on, one of the common criticisms of Phantom Menace was it was too kids-friendly. Jar Jar Binks was an infuriating clown character, while Darth Vader was reduced to a bumbling kid on Tatooine. The midichlorians certainly didn't help the situation, as they seemingly made the Force from a mystical, invisible connection to a quantifiable measurement. Huh, so you didn't like the way that carried over. I actually liked it in a way that you could still have the mystical mysticism element, but you could have a scientific explanation as well. We have two themes that develop, two overriding factors, but they don't actually cancel each other out. No, they're brought together in this movement and they're utilized in a way that actually makes sense. So, you can hate that if you want. I actually got used to it. I don't think that I liked it very much when I first heard it, but over time I thought, yeah, you know, that makes sense. That makes sense indeed. But continuing, despite George Lucas's best attempts, midichlorians ultimately haven't been acknowledged in the sequel trilogy. And while The Rise of Skywalker still hasn't hit theaters just yet, J.J. Abrams doesn't seem interested in bringing them into his pair of movies. We then have a sentence that really showcases where these people are going and tells you why this isn't a problem to them. Moviegoers who would like a reintroduction to them can check out The Phantom Menace, which is available to stream on Disney+. Plus. Hmm, so you're shilling for Disney. That's good there. Because it showcases, when you talk about this, why you didn't bring up the idea that it's not just a perplexing thought, but it's annoying one at that. I mean, when you think about what George Lucas wanted to bring to the table, he actually had an idea of where this stuff would go. He understood the extended universe. He understood all of these thoughts and concepts. And compare that, just the idea of it, to what we got. What we got was a new hope awakens. You know, the new hope plus the force awakens blended seamlessly in a way that killed nostalgia and killed it very, very well. More lens flare, more pew, pew but with all of the things that George Lucas wanted set to the sidelines and forgotten. Then we got The Last Jedi, a movie that didn't want to be a Star Wars movie, that in fact wanted to send a little middle finger floating down the aisle because, hey, you know those people that wanted to pay for this? They'll truly love that. Now compare that to what's being said here, and you tell me what J.J. Abrams is saying. What he's saying here is, hey, I heard it, I respected this guy once, but again, I can do it better. 
I can do it better indeed. So anyhow, how would you have covered this, I wonder? When you look at that, I mean, when you were talking about that interview, would you have covered it like cinema blends here? Would you have gone to the shilling bat? Or would you have brought up what this, it seems like to me, actually says? Hey, I'm better than George Lucas. You tell me what you think there. Like this kind of content, too? You know the drill by now. In ending, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you showing up. You make these endeavors possible. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. I appreciate you here. You know, we'll be doing this again soon. 